So I'm gonna uh, mix a little bit of this brown red here. And all I'm gonna do is, I think I don't need the orange. This already has uh, enough orange in it. And I'm gonna put a little bit of black on there. So I'm gonna pour a little bit of black, just a tiny bit, because I did tell you uh, last week that darker colors you need less of. Especially with black, it's a very powerful color. Um, so you don't want to overdo it. Um, so I'm gonna take this brush. Um, you can mix with a brush, but if you learn uh, how to paint, you know, fine do fine painting and stuff like that, um, they prefer that you don't mix your colors with a brush. They say um, mix it with a palette knife, something that looks like this, something that looks like this. You might have seen that in the stores. This kind of looks like a trowel. You don't want the paint to get up into the into the brush, the, the metal part of the brush right here, you know, the metal part portion, because what that will do is create a big solid mass of, of acrylic paint, latex paint up there. And then the brush, it'll prevent the hairs from kind of flexing in that area. And then your brush will slowly start to go bald. So you could use like a um, plastic knife. It does the same exact thing. This looks just like a plastic knife. Or you could use a little painter's palette brush. So I'm slowly adding my black paint. It is much safer to slowly add a little bit at a time. Okay, so this looks good. And you just keep moving the paint around to mix it. So that's how to use a palette knife to mix your paints. This is the proper way to mix your paints. Um, you're not really supposed to use your brushes, but everyone uses their brushes, but I just want to always show you the proper way though. So I'm gonna put that aside. Always cover up your acrylic paint. You don't want that to keep, cause that'll keep drying. Um, I always keep a paper towel handy here just to blot my brush out. If I need to wash out my brush, you don't want like a whole bunch of water in there, uh, inside the hairs. So that's good. This is like a, a, a real dark brown. It looks like a Van Dyke brown. Uh, Van Dyke brown is a just a dark brown. Or a, dar a dark umber. Or, or I should say burnt umber. Um, so there's a couple different shades of brown that are very popular in paint. So okay, I'm just gonna bring this guy over here. And I'm going to just, I'm not going to apply this black everywhere indiscriminately. I'm going to put it where I need it. And I just want to test this because on a spot, because I have experienced the salt clay where if you overwork an area of the salt clay and you rub, you know, you rub it too hard or something like that, um, it could lift up your old paint and then you'll see the white salt clay underneath. And you don't want that. So I'm gonna experiment with the sea sponge. You could use an old kitchen sponge and a rag. I have a feeling the rag will probably be the more gentler thing because this one might just still be a little too stiff. If that works. Okay, just like Okay. Oh, that removed some of that paint. That's not good. So that sea sponge is a little bit too aggressive. So I might have to just use this um, kitchen rag. So yeah, I think I'm gonna use the kitchen rag. That rubbing back and forth with the sea sponge, not good because now I have this little white patch that, that showed up. It doesn't like to hold on to the paint. So when you do put this little um, antiquing on there, you just have to be extra careful and not rub very hard. Or you can choose to not do it at all if you're, if you're like scared that it's gonna start rubbing off large patches. Now this is wet, 
because I just apply the paint and I just use this wet rag or damp rag to remove. I'm going to leave that alone and not do anything more to that area from now on or until the next day when it's fully dry because it's going to continue to remove layers. Okay, I'm just patting it. I'm going to take a look. Okay, do I like that? Do I not like that? Does it make the ridges stand out more? Hmm. I do like that. I think I would rather have that than not have that because without it, this looks too new. It looks like something that was just made. So I want to kind of give it an old feel, like a worn, uh, used, ancient kind of feel. So I'm going to add the brown and I'm going to try to push it into those little, um, those little uh, crevices in there. Take something gentle because, okay, sea sponge is out. Mr. Sea Sponge, too aggressive. You are too aggressive. So now we're going to do the rag. Just wipe it off the high points very gently. So 10 o'clock, so I've got about 20 some minutes. Okay, so what I did right here was, um, ooh, this paint is drying very quickly. I mixed up in this tray, and you can use a styrofoam plate or paper plate. I wish I had those things because then I could just throw it away after I'm done without having to wash dishes. But I have this um, enamel butcher's tray and acrylic paint does not stick to it since it's it's basically glass baked onto metal. Um, it just kind of peels off under the water. So I mixed um, a dark brown. So I used the burnt sienna, which is this red brown that's the color, most of the color of this. I also added white to lighten it up last week. I also added black. So I have this black acrylic paint. Okay, that's just school paint. And I just put a little bit of the black in the corner of my palette. So there's a big difference when you're using darker colors and lighter colors. I might have mentioned this before. When you're making a color, like I wanted to not use black. I feel like if I just use straight black, it might not look as nice because it's just too dark. I wanted to have a little bit of brown in there mixed with my black so it can kind of relate to the warm color of the pot. So I mixed up a dark brown. This is called a um, uh, maybe a Van Dyke brown. All these browns also, all these colors have popular names, you know, that paint that are on the paint tubes. So Van Dyke brown, something like that. It's just a nice dark brown. So I'm just taking my brush and I'm just kind of pouncing it. Pouncing is when you just go like this and you are pushing that into um, the paint, into your textured areas and you're just going to hit it with the brush. Okay, and I'm going to remove some of this. And I'm kind of using a little bit of force. When I say pouncing, it's like when you tap the brush with the paint onto the surface, like this, with the tip of your brush to force the color into the little crevices. The one thing I want you to see is this. You see these little light areas, these, this white area right there and over here, those are areas where the paint um, got rubbed off. So you don't want that. You don't want to do that. To rub off the excess uh, paint with, um, this is just like a dust cloth, like a microfiber dust cloth. You could use uh, an old undershirt or some sort of a fairly soft cloth, nothing like too abrasive. Um, I used a sea sponge and even this was abrasive and it caused the paint to come off. The salt clay is really different. It's kind of, um, it's, it's non-porous. It's actually not very porous. It doesn't absorb the paint like paper 
it's not as porous as paper so what's going to happen is um, what's going to happen is the paint is just sitting on top of the salt clay piece it's just sitting in there in a layer and if you rub on it too hard it'll just peel right off like a sticker um, so you can't be too aggressive with um, the wiping that you have to do after you cover you know the areas with the darker shade of brown so I have my little rag here so I'm just very gently wiping before the paint completely dries so you can't let it sit there or you're gonna have to you know you, you might end up scrubbing it too hard trying to get some of that you know trying to lighten up the high ridges and then end up removing your original base color and you don't want to do that because you worked hard on that you're gonna have to go back in sometimes it does peel off you're gonna have to go back in try to mix that original color um, of the base color and just touch up areas maybe that peeled when I first did this I you know and I, I just did that to a small section I wanted to make a decision do I like how this looks do I not like how it looks and then if I didn't like how it looks then I would have stopped let this whatever I did this morning dry and then cover it back over with this original color to just have it that way but but this compared to this I would say it's a pretty different look this looks like something that was just freshly made like this has the appearance of a piece of pottery that just was made you know the other day came out of the kiln this definitely could pass for something that has aged that's been around for a while that maybe has um, seen a couple years so um, and I like the way it's really making these lines stand out it's not like perfectly like that but you know as an artist you have to also respect the material and what it's going to do what is that material? And you have to discover what it's going to do um, and then when it doesn't turn out the way that you might have planned, um, you, you can't be too, you can't be that upset about it, you know? Um, some, some artists embrace that, the, you know, what the material itself is going to do, that kind of unpredictability. Um, that's what causes them to get really excited and, and delighted when something happens because sometimes it could turn out better. You see how that's going into those lines right there? So that's what I kind of wanted. Um, my paint is really starting to dry out so I might have to, when you see little uh, blobs of it come off and it starts to peel in layers and start to get in you know with the rest of your liquid paint um it's time to wash that out this container out and start fresh because most of your paint on there is dry to a you know thin skin um on the surface and it's just going to mess up your paint job over at 11:45. oh my goodness oh, it's time to go all right period six i will see you tomorrow and what i'll show you is how to put a um a varnish on that to protect the piece and that's the last step last last step okay all right have a good afternoon and i'll see you tomorrow during six period all right Sponges were very useful. Roman times, they were used as toilet paper. I guess they would have a bucket with a sponge that was attached to a stick. They'd do their business. They would wipe with the sponge and then put it back in the bucket for the next person. I need to wear an apron. <laughs>
because I'm wearing a light color shirt and that is definitely begging for an accident to happen. 